After making our impression, we're going to go ahead and take it to the laboratory bench where we're going to inspect the impression for completeness. We want to verify that my impression transfer posts have been adequately captured and I have proper roll of my border of my soft tissue as well as the entire dentulous ridge for me to be able to build my FTX prosthesis in the laboratory. First step is I want to verify that everywhere in my impression around my impression posts I can see the margin completely all the way around. We've captured it perfectly here, here, and here. I might want to go ahead and verify that I can go ahead and remove a little bit of this impression material right around some of the deeper impression posts to verify that as I place my analog everything will seat down into place. What I do is I just take a laboratory blade with just like a almost like a Bard Parker handle and I can take that and then just lightly trim away just around some of the inside portion around my impression post. And you can use the metal portion of your post to kind of guide you. As you do that, it'll come away nice and clean. In doing this, you think, well, I'm damaging the impression or something's not going to turn right out in the final prosthesis. That's just not true. All this is going to do is, is give you a little bit of laboratory block out for your FTX prosthesis. As I carefully remove that, I'm just going to use my impression post just to guide my instrument all the way around and I can use a little bit of air just to clear it away. And just for good measure I might want to trim down here just a little bit. Excellent. A little bit more air. Right in here we have to make sure any of those little pieces of impression material are carefully teased away. And then I'll go ahead and remove just a little bit more right there. Just so that way I know when I place my analog, it's going to snap on nice and clean. So now once my impression has been verified and everything's been trimmed away that would normally bind, the general idea is, is we want to go ahead and take on our FTX attachment system abutment analog and I'm going to go ahead and snap it on to my impression transfer posts. The best way to do that is just to take an instrument and you're going to notice that as it goes into place it should fit pretty similar to how it was in the mouth. You'll notice that some of these analogs look a little bit different from what you would see in the mouth in the FTX prosthesis and that's for a reason. When I made my impression at that particular angulation of my impression post, it's going to snap and fit directly on top of my analog. My analog has a flat area. That flat area is going to allow your laboratory to orient the FTX prosthesis uh, analog exactly how you intended it to be in the mouth. How that's done is just simply taking your analog and pushing it into place. And I take my finger and I just kind of verify that it's down all the way, just with a little simple twist mechanism. Continuing on, I'm going to take my next analog and I'm going to place it onto my slightly deeper area here on the patient's more anterior. I'm going to go ahead and show you just carefully pushing from the side and then seating my analog until it's completely adapted. You want to verify but as you look down it, you're going to see that if I take this instrument, I should be able to see it nice and snug. Just like this one back in here. Verifying that I have metal on metal contact, and as I push down lightly, I don't feel movement. I'm going to continue on placing the rest of them. And I'll go to the anterior most one here. This will be the trickiest one to get into place. Just pressing just gently. And you can see as I gave it a little bit of a tug that did not seat down all the way. And I had to give that one a little bit more firm pressure. A good way to verify that these posts are down all the way is, is that if your um, black transfer here was not excessively used during your on and off motion in the mouth, you should feel a tremendous amount of resistance as that goes on and off. There we go. And I can also just kind of gently push my impression material to the side, verifying that it's down all the way. And continuing on, I'm going to take my instrument 
And you can use this with your fingers, or you can just use an instrument like this. I'm just using the instrument here in this demonstration video so you can see easier with a little bit of positive pressure. And you should be able to almost hold the impression by that post to verify that it's down all the way. And for this last one in the back, I'll just demonstrate using my fingers. Nice simple snap neck mechanism. Again, verifying that I have metal on metal contact everywhere. Now the next step is we're going to go ahead and typically with any sort of my fixed prosthesis, I would pour this up in stone. However, what I would prefer to do for any of my fixed prosthesis is to use some sort of gingival masking agent or some sort of flexible material. So that way, as I work here, I don't have stones surrounding my margins of my FTX prosthesis. Now, it won't necessarily matter in some of these deeper areas in here, but here where my FTX prosthesis is just a little bit deeper, you'll notice that I can see my prosthesis and abutment junction right here. I'm going to want to cover that with a gingival masking agent. Now, since I'm using a PVS impression material, typically I use some sort of gingival replicating uh, material. And this is just an example of one that I use in my practice. Um, there's a whole bunch of different materials out there available for you. But typically what I do is, is I take a little bit of petroleum jelly or some sort of Vaseline style material and I'm going to take a brush and just brush in the areas of the PVS to verify that I don't have binding of the um, gingival masking agent. In sort of the little more delicate areas, I also use just a little smaller brush to pull that out here. Just to go ahead and get around those nooks and crannies. Especially here in that facial of that midline implant. Now once completed with this, we can go ahead and take my material, my masking agent, and I'm going to very carefully use my PVS cartridge gun delivery system just to go ahead and fill the areas around my analogs. Being careful not to use too much. You don't want to use too much here for this particular step. You do want to verify that it seats down all the way. You almost kind of push against the, the PVS impression while doing that. And there we go. And continuing on. And I try not to cover the top portion of my analog so that way this can easily be removed later on. Now once I've gone ahead and done that I can take my little brush again and just kind of brush it around so that way it's smooth. The smoother that you make this part the easier that it'll be to, to use it in your final uh, model. And that looks like a pretty nice application there. Maybe just a little smoothing there and then I clean that up and then just clean that up just a little bit more. And now I'm going to let that set for a few minutes. Now once my masking agent has fully set up, I need to go ahead and choose what type of stone I'm going to use to pour up for my model for my FTX prosthesis. Typically I like to use any sort of dental die stone, either a type 4 or type 5 die stone with a tremendous amount of either strength and accuracy. This happens to be one type of stone that I work a lot with my implant prosthetics. It's a type 4 dental stone, meaning it has very high strength and low expansion. There's a lot of different types of die stone that you can use for this particular purpose. What I like to do is, is also use a vacuum mixing bowl to go ahead and you know, gently agitate the stone so that way it mixes very nice and very carefully. I'm going to zoom out a touch so you can see that vacuum mixing bowl. When it goes into my vacuum mixer, I pour the stone into here, put the water in, and then just let it spin. Usually it takes about 20-30 seconds or so, and it comes back with a very nice creamy mix. I'm going to go ahead and get ready with my uh, agitator vibrator and model stone vibrator, and then go ahead and mix it up in the other room. 
Now once I've added my water and powder to the bowl, I went ahead and just gently massaged and cleaned. Or um, <clears throat> Now once I've added my powder and liquid to the bowl, I used my spatula to start incorporating everything, followed by a vacuum mix. This results in a very nice creamy stone mixture. Any time that I work with stone and PBS, I like to use a surfactant to just gently spray on top of my PBS impression. It results in a little nice cleaner appearance and then also uh, there's a less of a chance of getting bubbles. Typically I take that and then just gently spray off any residual excess. Turning on my model vibrator, I'm going to take a little bit of the stone and then just start from one corner gently using my finger to cushion my PBS impression so that way it's not too much vibration. The goal is, is I want to go ahead and take the stone very slowly incorporating across the arch, rolling back around, verifying that I don't have any areas of bubbles and it's completely adapted to that tissue form. Grabbing a little bit more of my stone Again, with my impression supported directly by my fingers, that way it cushions the vibration. I can take that and just gently touch the top of my model vibrator and then just start slowly building the model up, vibrating a little bit at a time. And the caution is, is to not overbuild your models at this point. I typically like to go ahead and just have enough just to cover my analogs. I've also found that the less model vibration that you do, the less chance that you're going to go ahead and get your analogs displacing while you put on your stone. Using a very careful manipulation technique and a little vibration here and there will verify that my analogs do not become disengaged or shifting during the model application. What you want to do is avoid the temptation of taking this and flipping it over to create a stone patty. That always results, or not always, but it, it results in a much greater chance of having your analog break free or something become disengaged from the impression. What I do is, is I just cover just enough so that way I can then peek up a little bit of some of these areas, take a little bit of my stone, peeking up. So that way now I'm going to let it set just like that. I can go ahead and create a base on this. Once the material is set up, the initial set takes about uh, 10 minutes or so and then I pour my base on top of it. This type of stone also has a slightly runnier capacity. The most important thing is, is that no one to kind of walk away don't overwork it and what I like to do is, is just kind of gently support it on something soft or with a um, multi-fold towel of some capacity. So the multi-fold towel will go on my model vibrator or here on the bench top and my model will just be lightly suspended without any area of contact of the stone or PVS to the countertop. By doing so we'll verify that I have a very low pressure application to the actual stone or the PVS. Any areas that have any pressure from pushing on the PVS um, will result in potential distortion. Now I go ahead and let that set. It takes approximately 10 minutes and I'll form a base. After my vacuum forming has been completed, you can see here that I still have that nice creamy mix. It's just it's a little bit stiffer now. So what I like to do is just take this little flat type of device. It's a model base former. You can also use a piece of tile from the home, a hardware store. And what I do is I take a little bit of this and then just apply it to the top portion of my existing model just to kind of get that material to settle in. Set aside for a second. And then I take this out of the bowl and then just form it directly on top of And you're almost making like a hamburger patty. So. 
Then I take my model, flip it over, and now I just let it kind of set there for a second. Taking my spatula, zoom in just a little. Taking my spatula, I can kind of roll up the edges of the sides of this model. So that way now you'll see as I roll that up, it'll allow me to go ahead and make everything nice and sealed. The goal is, is that I don't want it to droop too much, hence the thicker mix. So I kind of tug on my model a little bit just to kind of bring it up. And I want to fill in these back areas so that way it fits in there very nice. And I kind of let that come to almost like a sort of harder material set. And then I'll trim away some of this stone just with a blade just before it fully sets. So that way I don't have as much to trim away with my model trimmer. And now I just let that sit for approximately another 10-15 minutes. After my stone is fully set, I can go ahead and examine my stone just to verify that everything's been fully adapted to the tray and everything looks like a pretty good pour. At this point, with my custom tray impression, I'm going to go ahead and just gently start to tease around the edges of my impression coming underneath the PBS until my tray starts to lift off. As it gets close, I can go ahead and give it another little twist and then you'll notice that it separates pretty cleanly. Now even in the areas where you noticed where I went ahead and I had some of that uh, separating jelly, it still tends to want to bind a little bit. So you can carefully tease off our little soft tissue moulages and adapt it onto my model here. And occasionally you'll get little parts and pieces here and there. You can take that and put it back on there. Same thing in here. Peel that off. And it just snaps back onto the corresponding area on the model. Okay. Now I put all the little gingival moulages back together and all the masks. You can see here that my model turned out pretty good and pretty clean. I still have a little tiny bit of some of that PVS binding right here. Just going to get that flaked off. Now I can go ahead and I'm going to take my model and take it to my trimming unit and trim it on up. So what we have here is our finished completed model with our metal analogs in place. By trimming up a model looking like this allows my laboratory to easily be able to work with their FTX patient. Additionally, having my replicas in soft tissue that easily can pop in and pop out also permits the laboratory to very easily to go ahead and plan any of the laboratory stages for our prosthesis. Finally, one thing that we'll notice here is, is that the metal analogs allow the laboratory to go ahead and easily snap on the denture attachment housing with any of the black processing males. You'll see here that this feels very similar to the patient. However, it does not let you pivot anywhere around. So my laboratory technician is going to process my denture attachment housings at that exact orientation as I prescribed in the mouth. By controlling with the impression, the angulation of my impression caps or my impression copings will help my laboratory technician very easily and simply design my prosthesis. So as I go across the arch, and put on the additional attachments, you'll see here that it's locked in at that individual position, whether it's in the anterior or in the posterior. Now at this point, what my technician can also do is just continue to use the processing caps. The processing cap is what I was showing you earlier. You'll see here is as my technician could also go ahead and fabricate my FTX framework incorporating these processing spacers or processing caps so that way then I can pick this up in the mouth. All of these options are available to the FTX prosthesis especially the laboratory workflow and we can see here by getting to this metal analog state and the stone model gives me full flexibility for me to be able to work with my technician.